Welcome to a new episode of The Great Fat Shift. Today, we are going to be talking about the Queen of Demons, Ramda, and Barum, the King of Spirits. The battle between Barum and Ramda is featured in the Barum dance to represent the eternal battle between good and evil. Now, I'm going to be telling you the story of the Queen who became a child eating witch goddess fated to battle Barum, the King of Spirits, for eternity. This story will be told in the perspective of Rangda, the Queen of Demons. When my husband, the King, died, his people began to call me Rangda, which means widow, as if my entire life should be reduced to the loss of a single thing, namely a factless spouse. It's ironic that my name would be tied to him for eternity, for he cast me aside to marry another woman. Was I even officially still his wife? Ours had been a strategic alliance to unite two kingdoms. I was born Mahendradatta, princess of Java, and when I came of age, my father arranged for my marriage to King Udayana and shipped me off the neighboring isle of Bali. I never let the silly romantic fantasy enter my mind. As a royal, I had a job to do, a responsibility to my people. As a queen, though, I didn't have much power. My marriage would politically tie Java to Bali, and that was all that was required of me, aside from making sure I provided heirs. All over Bali, you'll see statues of me holding innocent babies, the instant before I devour them. Try not to judge me too harshly. If I am to act as a profane foil to all that is sacred, I must corrupt that which is most holy. Fat, their tender plump bodies taste even more delicious than suckling pig. It's just an added bonus. But I crave power. I yearn to be strong. Hindus have hundreds of deities. But the one I focus my prayers on was the goddess Durga, whom I had always emulated. Such a strong woman, a fierce warrior, her many arms clutching weapons, riding upon a snarling tiger. Yes, this was who I wanted to be. I had few options. With little power of my own, I decided to harness the strength of others. I turned to witchcraft, learning how to control demons, those dim witted ground dwellers, to do what I demanded of them. If someone displeased me, I would inflict a horrific illness upon them. At last, power coursed through my veins, an intense, almost orgasmic feeling. But secrets never last long in a palace. Someone, hoping to gain favor with the king, told my husband what I was up to at night in my open-air chamber that faced the graveyard at the edge of the sea. Udayana called the court together and stood upon the secret platform and shouted, Mahendradatta, you have brought shame upon this kingdom. You have led evil into Bali. You are no longer my queen. I exile you. And before I knew what was happening, his guards had grabbed me and dragged me out of the palace, abandoning me in the middle of the jungle amidst the screeching of monkeys. I had only the clothes on my back, no foods or supplies, a woman left exposed in the wild. Udayana assumed I would soon die and everyone could forget all about me and the shameful fact that I had corrupted this island with the introduction of witchcraft. The nocturnal sounds of the jungle filled my ears. I could hear animals moving stealthily through the foliage, stalking their prey. I was no weak woman. I called upon Durga and the demons to protect me. After a week or so, some villagers had learned of my exile and went into the jungle to seek me out. They hated the alluring call of the dark arts. They wanted me to teach them how to enslave demons. Bitter souls who wanted to curse others, who wanted to spread sickness among their enemies. These were my first students, my first layouts of witches. No longer the Queen of Bali, I became the Queen of Leax and eventually Queen of Demons. One of the demons I used to spy on the god returned one evening, slivering along the ground to inform me that my husband planned to remarry. Fury filled my breast, 
Who was Udayana to replace me? The mother of his children, the woman who brought his son and Langa, the king to be into the world. I screamed in rage, the horrific cry that wilted the plants around me, and sent the animals scurrying away in fright. Trembling with anger, I sent a message to Alanga to meet me at the edge of the jungle. I saw the prince sneaking down the path for our illicit rendezvous. His eyes darting in every direction, worried he might be seen. Mongo, he said. Looking at the ground, he would not meet my eyes. I have called you here to request a favor. Convince your father that he must not remarry. I cannot. Elanga turned from me and fled back to the palace. Years later, I learned that Udayana had died and Elanga was no king. I refused to forgive him for not defending my honor. He had abandoned his own mother and he would pay the price. Elanga knew of the danger of my wrath. Reports of desecrated graves had spread of a wild woman of the jungle and her bad demons, which wreaked havoc on the people of Bali. My son called upon Empu Prada, a legendary holy man, and asked him how to defeat me. He was told to seek the aid of another god, Barun, the king of the spirits, a mighty shape-shifting beast. He sometimes takes the form of a war, sometimes an elephant, sometimes a tiger, for the lion guys is his favorite. People don't like to think of him as a monster, but that's what he is. Elonga's army approached, carrying with his silver knives called Chris. The tips coated with poison. Let's give them a taste of their own medicine, I thought. All of the soldiers were suddenly consumed with an overwhelming desire to turn the Chris upon themselves. To commit suicide by stabbing the toxic plague into their own hearts. But just as the daggers were about to pierce their skin and become inflamed with the poison the soldiers meant for me and my demons to suffer, Barong reared up and cast a counter spell. Instantly, the skin of Ilanga's soldiers became impenetrable. The Chris were deflected. The army was saved. A realization had dawned on me, like a bright light piercing the darkness. This was my rule for eternity. Barung and I were to engage in a never-ending battle. Neither good nor evil could win. That is it for this episode of The Graveyard Ship. Hope you've enjoyed this story, and I'll see you again soon.